Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Having a nice day on President's Day weekend? Are you walking on the beach? Are you enjoying the fine nation that Obama has given you? Well, Supreme Court justice is dead, but that shouldn't concern you very much. Hey, everybody, let's start it from another point of view. Let's say, God forbid, that the most extremist judge in history, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who never should have been appointed because she was the former head of the ACLU legal department, who was ushered onto the Supreme Court by Republican rhinos who have destroyed America. Now, let's say, God forbid, even though she's been sick with cancer for over 10 years, suddenly this leftist fanatic, Ginsburg, goes to a remote resort in Texas. She uh, issues Secret Service. She has a dinner with some friends, and she goes to sleep at 9 o'clock saying, I'm tired. The next morning, she's found fully clothed with her pajamas on, without a wrinkle on the bed, with her hands folded over her chest with a pillow over her head. Question, do you think the left would be screaming foul play if a Republican were in office such as Donald Trump with only a few months left to go of his presidency? Do you think the left would be screaming that Donald Trump would have no right to appoint anyone to the Supreme Court? Do you think they would be demanding an autopsy and a full federal investigation? Now let's begin the savage nation on this President's Day because that's exactly what happened yesterday with Justice Scalia. Many of you don't even know it because the newspaper expunged that one little fact. They took the original report of the death of Anthony Scalia in a remote West Texas hotel, and they left out one fact. He was found with a pillow over his head. Now, that's been reported by the local newspaper since it happened. It was in the original report from the local newspaper. Scalia dies at ranch with pillow over his head. That was reported in the original local newspaper. And who reported that? The man who owned the luxury hotel, Mr. Poindexter. He said his hands, quote, quote his hands were sort of almost folded on top of the sheets. Poindexter told the New York Times the sheets weren't rumpled up at all. Now, the New York Times, when they repeated this story from the San Antonio Express News, left out the little fact of the pillow over his head. But it gets even more intriguing. Do you know what you're listening to on the Savage Nation today? I realize you're st most of you are so stumble-bummed up in this country that even if it were proven that he were killed, you wouldn't care. That's what would come out next. See, I could waste my time for the next three hours, the next three days, the next three months, presenting you with evidence after fact after fact after fact, which would say, wait a minute, at least there should be an investigation, and you wouldn't care, and I don't care if you're voting for a Republican, you wouldn't care. The country is so sufficiently paralyzed, you seem like bees who've been sprayed with raid. The entire nation is a nation of horseflies sprayed with raid. So you know what? Maybe I should talk about meatball recipes. I don't think you want to hear Buddy talk about all the conspiracy theories surrounding Scalia and was he murdered. You don't want to hear that today. It might disturb you. You might have to reach for your Soma. You might have to drink another glass of Chardonnay this afternoon. Some rot gut $2 garbage to numb your stupid brain. If you think I'm full of contempt for the American people, you're right. Let's go back again. Is it a conspiracy theory to ask questions that are so obviously in need of answer? Or is it just common sense? And where is this common sense in the press or in the Republican Party? Why, the answer is nowhere. And that's why I am here. That's why I am Michael Savage. Now, let me add this to the puzzle again. You would expect me, as a firebrand talk show host, to find me as you will, to raise questions that no one else would raise. You'd expect me to go where no one else dares to go. You're going to have people talking about, will he appoint someone, shouldn't he appoint someone, does he have a right to appoint, can he appoint, who will he appoint, will he appoint, 
Will he appoint Willie? Will Willie Brown be appointed? Will Willie Sutton be appointed? Willie, 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 won't he? But no, I don't want to care. I, I want to know about the murder. Is it a conspiracy theory to ask these questions? Where is the stupid, worthless Republican Party? Where is the dead press in America? There is no press. There is no Republican Party. Now, let's go back again. Let's say, God forbid, the most extremist left-wing justice is found dead with a pillow overhead at a remote resort with no secret service and there's no autopsy. And let's add a little bit more to your thinking. Let's say the resort was owned by a Republican Party donor and a Donald Trump award winner. Are you kidding? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, that's important for you to understand because there are pictures available of Barack Obama shaking hands with John Poindexter, the man who owns the resort. He's a Texas millionaire businessman who also happens to be a large donor to the Democrat Party, who also received an award from Barack Obama. Mr. Poindexter, you see, is the owner of the Sabillo Creek Ranch that Supreme Court Justice Scalia was found dead at this weekend. Did any of this make it to your local newspaper? Can you put down the Chardonnay and lift up a glass of coffee for a minute? Because here is the question. Are you ready? If it was Poindexter who was reportedly amongst those who initially discovered Justice Scalia's body, and as reported, he then coordinated closely with local officials. That's a joke in El Paso. It's called El Paso for a reason, because anything that you want, Paso's right through the town. You get the picture? It Paso's right through. He then coordinated closely with local officials in El, El Paso, to have Justice Scalia declared dead via a phone conversation with the area medical examiner, but without an actual medical examination of the body. All of you on the left, do you think the left would be screaming for an autopsy if, God forbid, it had been Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Well, I'll give you a little bit more information for you to make your decision. Mr. Poindexter, the ranch owner who found Scalia's body, was also the primary point man between the ranch location and so-called federal authorities who were very slow to arrive on the scene. They got there the way O.J. escaped the, the police in L.A., a real slow escape. They took their time about it. How come there's been no request for an autopsy, even though reports suggest that a Supreme Court justice was found with a pillow over his head and he died alone without any witnesses? My friends... I ask you again, was Scalia murdered in plain English? It's a question that must be answered. And I realize that right now conspiracy theories are swirling around the death of Antonin Scalia. Two days after Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia was found dead in a remote West Texas hotel, a former D.C. homicide commander is raising questions about how the death was handled by local and federal authorities. So let's go beyond Michael Savage now. William O. Ritchie, former head of criminal investigations for the D.C. police, <clears throat> wrote in a post on Facebook yesterday, as a former homicide commander, I am stunned that no autopsy was ordered for Justice Scalia. It gets even better. Who was the U.S. Marshal Service? Said, oh, U.S. Marshal. Where was the Secret Service? Nowhere. Who were the U.S. Marshals? Well, I have a story for you on that one. See, I do my homework no matter what the day is. Neither rain nor shine can keep Michael Savage away from trying to get at the truth. So who is the U.S. Marshal? And take a guess who appointed him. Well, if you're out enjoying the day, I suggest you turn your radio off. Because you're never going to enjoy this day after what you hear on the Savage Nation. It's going to get so ugly, so fast that even left-wing fanatics are going to demand an investigation. You do realize that this is a stunning revelation. Scalia dying at a resort like this. Now, I, admittedly, 79-year-old people die in their sleep. L let's start with that one. Let's start with the cynics amongst you who say, I'm just being an alarmist for ratings. Let's start with that argument. Since none of you heard me say, what if it was, God forbid, a leftist who died like this with a Republican president? That went right over your head. Because most of you have twisted optic chiasmas. You have rigor mortis of your optic chiasma. You can't even understand an argument from the other point of view. So I'll put that aside. That's asking too much of uh, rigid, rigid minds. So we'll deal with the facts. 
Why is there no autopsy? Now, you'll say, well, the family said they didn't want one. That's irrelevant. The family has no authority over this. At this point, the only authority is the law, and the law would demand an autopsy. There was no medical examiner there. It was called in by phone. And by the way, here's another fact. She said she made a mistake. She admitted that today. She said, I would not have declared what I declared had I had the opportunity to observe or hear any other facts. I have that as well for you. But let's go back to the beginning. Scalia found dead with pillow over his head. The resort was owned by Democrat Party donor and Obama Award winner. Did you know any of this? Did you know any of this? Does it matter that the man who owns the ranch who found the justice is a donor to the Democrat Party, lifetimer, also received an award from Barack Obama. He's the owner of the Cibolo Creek Ranch that Supreme Court Justice Scalia was found dead at earlier this week. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Poindexter who was among those who discovered the body, who then coordinated with local officials to have Justice Scalia declared dead via a phone conversation with the so-called area medical examiner, but without an actual medical examination of the body. Mr. Poindexter, Democrat donor, award recipient from Obama, was also said to be the point man between the ranch and so-called federal authorities who arrived very slowly at the scene. To date, there has been no request for an autopsy, even though initial reports by Poindexter suggest the Supreme Court justice was found with a, and I'm quoting now, quote, pillow over his head. And he had died alone in his room without any apparent witnesses. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize it's a holiday for America. America's been on holiday a very long time. America's been out to lunch a very long time. Here in California, for example, if I read to you the number of school days that children actually go to school and learn anything, your hair would fall out of your head. When I moved here in 1974, California had the best schools in the nation. It led the world in graduates and what they were accomplishing. Under the increasing psychosis of liberalism, California has amongst the worst schools in the nation. The children are not in school this week. This is ski week. You see, they need to learn how to ski in the modern world. They don't have to function in the modern world. They ask Bernie Sanders where the motto is, live free and get high. I'll be back. Well, get ready to work like a slave all day to take care of the bums that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton want you to take care of. So Obama's flooding America with uh, third worlders who will never assimilate into this nation. And on the cusp of a decision on immigration, abortion, and so many other things crucial to the future of America, the leading conservative justice is found dead in a remote Texas hotel, no autopsy. And now the tech, are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? This is an update for those of you who know everything. All of you out there who know everything, you don't know everything. Presidio County Judge Cinderella Clarenda, whatever, Cinderella Clarenda Coavara now claims she never attributed Justice Scalia's death to a myocardial infarction, but to natural causes. So she's changing what she said was the cause of death. Now, of course, she wasn't there. She was called on the phone by the hotel owner, a you know, recipient of an award and a donor of the Democrat Party. So she, yeah, he died of a heart attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now let me get back to, to, to the booze. Now she says, I didn't say heart attack. I said to natural causes. So now she's changing it again. Presidio County Judge Cinderella Guevara, I don't know if it's clear. Is it Cinderella? Am I making this up? Clinton. C-L-N-D-E-R-E-L, or is it Cinderella Guevara? I, I, it's unbelievable to me. This is becoming a parody of a parody. Speaking with WFAA 8 News just moments ago, the judge, another, I can't say her name, Judge Guevara says she turned down the procedure Saturday, okay, after Presidio County Sheriff Danny Dominguez said there were no signs of foul play. Oh, really? How do you like that? She doesn't know. She was a long way from there. Squavera stated that 